Uh, the, over, the overview section will talk about the dimensional weight rating and the new rules in effect with UPS and FedEx. We'll also look at a few examples that demonstrate the potential financial impact businesses could start seeing the end of January, uh, February timeframe on your shipping invoices. And then we'll also talk about some tips we can provide shippers looking to mitigate those additional costs. And then we'll open it up for Q&A and comments for both Indicia and V-Technologies. Our goal at the end of this webinar is to provide you a better understanding of the effects of the dimensional weight changes and where we can reduce your shipping cost. Postal Service has some great alternatives, and we're excited to share them with you today. So let's get started. For those of you who are not familiar with dimensional weight, you'll hear the term dim weight, as it's often called. And it's essentially just the system for rating your packages. Dimensional weight is calculated when the size and volume of the package is used to determine the weight at most shippers are used to the rate that they pay to ship packages being based on the weight of the bit box versus the distance it's being shipped. Or should I say being based on the weight of the box and the distance it's being shipped. This, of course, excludes any of the flat rate box options, like the small, medium, large, or regional rate box options with the Postal Service. <clears throat> Dimensional weight rating. Oh, you can go back to the other slide still. Dimensional weight rating means that the carrier will compare the actual weight of the package to its size and cubic volume. The carrier applies a formula that determines how much it will cost the shipper to send it. Basically, you will pay based on the actual weight and distance of the package or by the dimensional weight and distance of the shipment. We'll get into a little bit more detail around the formula in the slides ahead. But for existing FedEx and UPS customers on the call with us today, know that dimensional weight rating isn't a new thing. Uh, it's been around for a while now. But let's take a closer look in these next couple slides. So these next two slides will look at when it applied before and how it applies this year. So the reason why it's such a big deal for shippers this year is that UPS and FedEx have had a major change to when dim weight rating applies to a certain package. The changes only affect domestic packages. And while dim weight rating doesn't apply, does apply to international shipments, we're going to keep our focus today on domestic. Previously, UPS and FedEx would use a dimensional weighting rate on all air packages. And that would include overnight, second day, three day service levels. <clears throat> so shippers using those services are already used to comparing the volume to the weight of the package and being charged for the higher of the two. So ground service packages, however, were exempt from dimensional weight rating if their volume was less than three cubic feet. Three cubic feet is a large package to say the least. And most businesses wouldn't have shipments that big because most packages for online purchases going to residents or businesses, for that matter, are smaller. And most businesses would work with, and most businesses would uh, work with, wouldn't run into this type of rating. It's also important to know that Postal Service used dimensional weight rating as well, but only in select circumstances. So on that far right side of the slide, you'll see that only the mail class subject to dimensional rating for postal service is priority mail. And the package must be larger than one cubic foot in volume. Again, that's a fairly large package. And must be shipping to zones 5 through 9, which are further distances like shipping from California to New York, as an example. If a package is larger than one cubic foot and closer to zones one through four, the published balloon rates apply. Flat rate and regional rate box options are, is not subject to the dimensional weight rating. So you probably heard the USPS slogan if it fits and ships. So they're not subject to the dimensional weight. So when does it apply now? 
what does the dimway picture look like now? For postal service, it's business as usual. There are no changes to the dimensional weight rating rules for priority mail. For UPS and FedEx, air services, all ground packages continue to be subject to dimensional weight rating. The major change with the, post, with the UPS and FedEx ground services, all ground packages are subject to dimensional weight rating regardless of the size. The new rule went into effect about the same time as the FedEx and UPS raised their rates for all services and surcharges. This is a really big deal for businesses of all kinds because you end up paying a lot more for your medium and large size lightweight packages and those costs need to be absorbed somewhere. Ask these costs to your customers or vendors when there's so much pressure to offer free and low cost rate, flat rate shipping options. So let's take a look at how it's calculated. Uh, to calculate the dimensional weight of a package, shippers would measure the length, width, and height of the box and multiply those measures to come up with the cubic volume of the piece. Then that cubic volume is divided by the dimensional weight factor to determine the dimensional weight of the package. UPS and FedEx use a dimensional weight factor of 166 for all domestic packages, while the Postal Service uses a dimensional weight factor of 194 for just priority mail packages that require dimensional weight rating. This means that the dim weight of the box that's larger than one cubic foot because that's the minimum size for the dim weight rating that applies to Postal Service, will be different from different for UPS and FedEx than USPS. It'll have a heavier dim weight with UPS and FedEx because their factor is smaller, 166 for the private carriers and 194 for Postal Service. Then the resulting number of this calculation is rounded up to give you the dimensional weight. So the dim weight, if the dim weight is heavier than the actual weight of the package, the dim weight is what's used to determine the shipping rate. And if the actual weight is heavier than the dim weight, then the actual weight is used for the shipping rate. To give you a better sense of these calculations <clears throat> and the cost of the impact, then we'll look at the next couple slides. OK, so we'll look at the woman's shoulder bag first. It's large, it's a bit bulky, uh, but light and weighing just two pounds. So if you run the dimensional weight calculation, the volume of this package would be a dim weight of nine pounds. Since the dim weight is heavier than the actual weight of two pounds, then the shipper yourself would pay nine pounds. So there's a seven pound difference on this particular example. And if you average the rate across the zones, one through eight, that's an increase of nearly 28% or more than $2 per package. If it was just like one package, that might not be a big deal, but businesses ship more than just one package a day. So we provided an example that if a business ships 50 packages a day, it would add up to an additional $2,300 per month and keeping in mind that doesn't include the surcharges like fuel and residential surcharge. That same package shipped with Postal Service priority mail would cost you $5.84. So with the cost, uh, the potential cost impacts like that, you can imagine why it's important for shippers like yourself to understand <clears throat> how the dim weight rating works. But it's just not the really big items that are affected, even the medium size items could see an increase, like take this video game controller as another example. It's obviously much smaller at just 12 by 8 by 8 and weighs one pound. The package, though, has a dimensional weight of five pounds. So that's the rate the shipper would pay. This mean, means an increase of $2 per package, nearly 30% increase. And at another example of 50 packages a day, that's just under $2,300 in additional costs, not including the surcharges. And the Postal Service priority mail rate is $0.05. Cents. 
And the next slide will look at kind of uh, something that's a little bit larger, like this thin, small to medium-sized bed bed, uh, pet bed. It's actually, its actual weight is one pound, with the dimensional weight of this item being eight pounds. And that's more than $3 in additional average per shipment, up 40%. Average cost increase, which adds up to more than $3,000 a month in additional cost at the 50 packages a day. And what can be challenging for shippers when it comes to dimensional weight rating is that there's really no clear rule of thumb of what type of packages will most frequently be affected. And this is because it really depends on the box size, the actual weight of the individual shipment. And there's so many variations with, of so many products that each business needs to evaluate their unique packaging needs. So let's talk about some tips to identify savings. Here we recommend some tips for shippers to try to reduce their impact of the dimensional weight ratings. First, shippers should look at the size, sizes and weights of their packages you ship most frequently with UPS and FedEx, paying special attention to the large but lightweight items. If you often ship combinations of products or kits, what type of packaging do you choose? And then from there, you can determine if those packages will be affected by the dim weight rating. And if so, calculate the potential impact. And be sure also to incorporate all the surcharges that the private carriers have, the residential fuel, um, Saturday delivery, address corrections, et cetera. The fuel surcharge, for example, though, is calculated off of the base rate of the package. So if a business is paying for a higher dimensional weight, their fuel surcharge will be higher as well. And you'll also find situations where you're paying more to ship because of the dimensional weight. There are a couple options for you to consider. If there's an opportunity to improve how you package these items so that you can shift to like the smaller box size, that could save you lots of money. We definitely recommend making sure there's still adequate packing material to avoid you know, damage to the product itself. In many cases, though, shippers already are doing everything they can to pack products efficiently, and using a smaller box simply won't work. Or perhaps even a smaller box is subject to dimensional weight. So businesses who haven't considered the Postal Service or using USPS in a limited way should evaluate if the new priority rates, priority mail rates, including some of the flat rate box options, would be a more economical shipping option for your business. Delivery times are comparable to ground for closer zones, and often postal service is much faster than ground when covering a greater distance, like zones five through nine, while still being very cost effective. So by evaluating and shifting, business, shifting packages to a new carrier where it makes sense, a business like yourself uh, could save a lot of money and mitigate the impact of the dimensional weight rating. One of the areas that I could suggest is, you know, reaching out to your local post office um, and try to locate a small shipping specialist, so I call them like shipping solution specialist, SSS, um, who can perform a shipping analysis. So they're often underutilized to take advantage of their expertise if you don't have the bandwidth uh, internally to do you know, a shipping analysis of your products. And if you prefer to um, receive a referral from, you know, a, for this type of postal service rep, um, Indisha has sales reps as well that could locate one for you. So you can feel free to call Indisha directly and you can be routed to our sales team and they could provide a referral of a good shipping, you know, solution specialist in your area to help you evaluate your shipping mix, do a shipping analysis, and um, and try to see what business you can move over to Postal Service and save on your on your shipping cost. Uh, and then, oh, let me, Carolyn, one go back again. One second. Okay. And then at the bottom, the footnote. So for using the flat rate box options, 
There's no uh, agreement required with the post office, any of the small, medium, flat rate boxes, any of the regional rate box, A, B, C. Uh, there's no agreement required. But for the CPP, commercial plus pricing, and cubic volume rates, uh, there is an agreement that's required. You have to have a commitment with the post office um, that you would ship that many packages a year to qualify for CPP, commercial plus pricing, or cubic volume. So in order to qualify for cubic, you need to ship at least 50 packages a year. And for CPP, you have to have a commitment volume of 75,000 packages a year. And um, Mary and, and guys on the, the call here, I just wanted to mention that um, I mentioned Starship supporting the cubic volume rates earlier. And um, this is what I was referring to. Um, and Mary just wants to make sure that um, you, know, you guys are aware of the minimum volume requirements. Uh, but if you were to have those volume requirements and you wanted to work with the post office to uh, be able to get discounted rates, it would um, you know, probably have quite a big impact on your freight charges. Uh, Mary, did you have anything else on the cubic pricing that you wanted to add before we go into the Starship-related slides? No, I think that was it. It was just uh, the volume commitments for the cubic. And then on the next couple slides, you'll talk a little bit about um, having to enable the account on Indicia's side for cubic pricing. Mm -hmm. But it was mainly just what the volume commitments are and, and how to contact the Postal Service rep to see if they could qualify for that cubic pricing. OK, great, thanks. Um, the other thing is, I mean, that's some great examples that Mary had there to give you an idea of the dimensional weight and how those can impact your business from um, a carrier perspective. So I wanted to just go into Starship side and give you some additional updates um, from that perspective as well as it relates to dim weight. So what I wanted to do is just to review um, the dimensional weight in Starship. Um, just so you guys um, are aware, if you're not, that um, you can define custom packaging in Starship. So the little screenshot that we have here will show you that um, you know, Starship will provide you with all the flat rate options that Mary mentioned earlier, as well as the regional ones. Uh, so you have those available in the packaging dropdown of your packaging tab. You can also define your own custom packaging if you guys are using your own boxes and you want to define the DIN weights in there or dimensions. You can associate those to your own boxes and have those come up automatically. And we also, in this last release, uh, had a, added a, a setting that uh, will require your shippers to have a dimensional um, weight, or I should say the length, the width, and the height um, in your packaging area. Um, before we will, or Starship will allow you to process the shipment. Um, so we've made some changes to help mitigate the potential issues of you know, not giving your dimensional weight to the carriers um, and getting those rates back. The other thing I wanted to mention is that we do have uh, ship via rules. And that's where you can basically define how you want Starship to automatically select a carrier and service for you. So okay. you can. Um, you know, create a ship via rule for best way, for instance, that will uh, pick whichever carrier um, will get it to the destination by a certain time uh, and, you know, with the least cost associated to it. So you can have Starship automatically select that if you'd like. But in either case, um, if the dimensions are entered into Starship or if they're automatically populated from um, a selection on the packaging drop-down, Starship will calculate the appropriate dim weight for you so that you'll be able to see that. And we do connect directly to, um, like UPS and FedEx, will connect directly to their servers so you'll see your negotiated rates. So if you have negotiated a different divisor for the dim weight, you will see that um, reflected in the rates. And as far as the post office is concerned, um, as we mentioned earlier, there is the flat rate box options. So you can select those through Starship um, to be able to get some um, discounted rates in those instances. And then again, Starship does some support the commercial plus cubic pricing. 
Um, so if you provide the length, the width, and height in the Starship user interface, um, Starship will return the lowest authorized rate. Again, those cubic uh, pricing does require those minimum volume. Um, and it also requires that you have something in place with the post office so that when Starship sends the rate request over to Indicia, we'll actually get your negotiated rate back. And then we just had a few resources here. Mayor, I think those first two are, um, or at least the first one there is an Indicia blog that talks specifically to the dimensional weight. Right, right. So this is a valuable resource for some shippers um, that can, you know, just, well, this PowerPoint presentation is online as well, so you can simply click on it and learn a little bit more about dimensional weight and get into more detail. There's some other hot links within there that will take you some to some additional websites that can give you a recap of what we just talked about today. And then the Postal Service did have a price change just on their priority mail rates uh, September 7th. So if you'd like to take a look at um, that price sheet, um, you know, you can log into the Postal Service, you can download a PDF, you can actually download an Excel sheet as well if you want to, if you have someone like a, an analyst, a business analyst on your side that wants to do you know, a greater de uh, in-depth detail of the shipping analysis mix and what business you can move over from FedEx to UPS, this would be a great resource as well. And then on the V-Technology side, I just provided the um, general 800 number. If you hit option one, it'll bring you to the sales team. If you're interested in um, taking a look at the post office module or getting additional information on that, and then you can also email sales at vtechnologies.com. Uh, before I go into the Q&A, first, Mary, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that about covers it on our end. Okay. So I just have one quick poll I wanted to put up on the screen for everybody to take a look at here. So um, this poll is just asking if you're interested in learning more about the uh, cubic pricing. You know, we are looking at prioritizing our development schedule and adding some resellers uh, of the uh, cubic pricing, um, which would allow you to um, have access to these cubic pricing um, options without requiring that minimum requirement. So we just wanted to um, you know, kind of get an idea from those of you um, on the call today, see if you'd be interested in that, and then um, you know, we can also follow up with you on that. Looks like some people are still responding, so I'm going to leave that open for a few minutes. And I'll also make reference that the cubic pricing consists of five tier groups. So you have packages less than 20 pounds. The longest dimension may not exceed 18 inches, but there are five tiers. So if you were to click on that PDF um, for the Postal Service price change, you could see what those tiers are. But tier one mail piece measures up to 0.1 cubic foot, and then tier two is from 0.1 to 0.2, and then tier three, and so forth. So tier five can go all the way from 0 0.40 up to 0.5 cubic feet. So there's five tiers. And then, Mary, is there um, also a, a weight limitation for a cubic pricing, correct? Yeah, so that's the 20 pounds. So it must weigh 20 pounds or less. And the, the dimension, the longest dimension, can't exceed 18 inches. And, you know, other than that, cubic price, there's some other things, but cubic price mail pieces may not be rolls or tubes. Um, Richard, if there's anything else that I'm missing on cubic pricing, but that's pretty much Yeah, those are the restrictions, you know, but there, there are also interesting ones such as uh, the soft pack. So we support cubic soft pack, and it just takes the two dimensions. It's that poly bag type product where if you, a lot of people use it if they're shipping t-shirts or 
jackets, coats, but they don't necessarily need it to be in a box. Those things, you can stuff those full and, uh, and resupport that cubic version of that type of package as well. Great, thanks. Great. So it looks like 82% have voted. I appreciate you guys responding to that. I'm just going to close it out. It looks like 57% said they were interested and 43% said no. And then I just wanted to take a few minutes to review some of the questions that came in, Mary. Some of these are Starship okay. related, I think. So let's take a look here. So there was a question from Dan. Thanks, Dan. Um, in order to do post office, you will have to ship 50,000 packages a year. Um, I, what we were referring to in those minimum package requirements was specific to the cubic pricing. Um, and so if you wanted to, you know, with the, with the post office module in Starship and its connection to um, Indicia, there is no minimum, uh, you know, in order to ship your post office packages if you wanted to start doing that. Um, and actually, by using um, you know Indicia on the back end and getting that electronic postage printed, you will be um, you know you'll have some discounts available to you just for using the Indicia um, service for the electronic postage. And Mary, maybe you can give them a little bit of more information on that. Yeah, yeah. So you're working with Indicia like a PC provider like Indicia, you automatically. VTEX customers, the technologies customers automatically qualify for commercial base pricing. And then from there, you, if you want a commercial plus, that's where the agreement's required. But there's no volume commitments for commercial base pricing. OK, great, thanks. Um, there was a question on length, width, and height being centimeters or inches. And in Starship, um, we're looking for inches on, uh, in those fields. Um, a question on um, requiring the length, width, and height in Starship. So that setting that I referred to um, is actually in the carrier setup. Uh, we did make it per carrier so that um, you wouldn't be required to enter dimensions for carriers like the post office where it's not impacting you as much. Um, and you could require your shippers um, enter it in for either UPS or FedEx. So that is a setting. Uh, Tracy, we can send you a follow-up um, link that gives you, um, you know, more information on how to set that up. Um, there's also a question here, does Starship support or recommend any dimensional scales or scanners? And if not, will that be coming? Steve, thanks for your question. That was a good segue, actually. Um, we are working on um, supporting electronic communications to dimensional scales. Um, we're currently working with the CubaScan model. And we can follow up with you on additional information on that, Steve. Um, there was a question from Scott on, uh, is this for UPS only pricing or FedEx and UPS as well? Not sure exactly what you're referring to there, Scott, but I think that um, when Mary was giving her examples, um, maybe that's what you were referring to. And Mary, I can't remember, did you have both UPS and FedEx pricing there, or was it based on one or the other? Yeah, well, since they use the same factor, uh, the 166. OK, so you were just going off the published price on those guys. Um, there was another question on the setting in Starship that requires the dimension fields to be filled in. And I think we went through that earlier. Um, that was from Micah. Uh, yeah, definitely there are some settings. Uh, and we can send you over a link to uh, the web help to give you more information on how to set that up. Another question here from Kathy, is the post office module separate? Yes, it is a separate module in Starship. Um, and the, our post office module actually uses the Indicia platform on the back end. So um, there is the Indicia, the monthly Indicia service fee that's also um, 
required in order to get the electronic postage to print on your thermal label printers or laser printers. There's another question here from Daryl. You mentioned transit times were the same as FedEx. Do you have a zone chart um, to back that up on the transit times? Well, I think on the, um, as far as Starship is concerned, um, we typically get transit times directly from the carriers using their web services. Um, so we're able to provide you um, both UPS, FedEx, as well as post office as far as um, the transit times and how long it will take to get to the destination uh, using either one of those carriers. Can post office packages be tracked the same as UPS and FedEx from Craig? Mary, do you want to review that one? Maybe we lost Mary. Um, yes, they can. Uh, delivery confirmation is um, standard with uh, most of the uh, post office services. And that actually will print on the label. Um, and then we also will update the ERP system with that delivery confirmation number so that your front office employees can have access to it. So it works very similar to UPS and FedEx. And actually, I think the post office is doing quite a bit to upgrade their technology to you know, provide more on-time tracking functionality as it relates to the packages. Uh, let's see, next question. When do the carriers require the dimensional weight, and is it mandatory or optional? Um, well, in Starship, we, you, know, you can make it mandatory using that setting that we discussed earlier, but um, we don't require that you put them in, because your packaging um, you know, may be such that the um, actual weight is always heavier than the dimensional weight. So the carriers also don't require that you um, submit length, width, and height. Um, but with the changes that UPS and FedEx have um, put in place where they are calculating the dimensional weight for ground shipments in all cases, um, I think that's having a, a big impact on many of our customers who um, you know, may be on that cusp where their dimensions are going to um, cause them to be rating based on a higher weight level than than the actual weight. Um, let's see, there's a question here on lots of questions on that setting for the length, width, and height. So maybe we'll just put that in the generic follow-up email to everybody so you guys all have that. Um, will the dim weight charges show up at the time of shipment in Starship, or is it adjusted after on the invoices by the carrier? Thanks, Jody, for that question. And um, yes, you should see the dim weight charges directly in the Starship ship screen as you're processing. As long as you've entered in the length, width, and height, Starship will calculate those for you. I think I might have missed some. Caesar asked, can you provide a map that shows all different zones? Caesar, maybe you can give us additional detail on the carrier that you're referring to. If it's the post office, um, we can definitely send you resource links on that. Yeah, and the Postal Service price list link will provide the zones there as well. If it's post okay. office. Perfect, thanks. Um, there's also a note here, Smart Post uses transit times of two to seven days. Will Post Office module give a more exact transit time? Um, on the Starship side, as it relates to the Post Office, you know, we have added some enhancements to the Post Office to use the Post Office web service in order to get you the um, time in transit. and. Um, I probably have to do a little more research for you on that one, Daryl, because I'm not sure um, what the details are as far as what it returns. But um, 
we can give you that information and also give you information on where you would set that up inside of Starship so that it can utilize the um, post office web services to give you the time and transit. Um, we added that enhancement as a part of the ship via rules so that you could create a ship via rule that uses those transit times in conjunction with a required delivery date and time to come up with the you know cheapest or uh, way to ship the package. Beverly has a question. Um, you said that Starship will automatically choose the best way. Does that mean it will look at the actual weight versus dim weight and pick the correct billable weight? Uh, thanks for that question, Beverly. Yes. Um, but if you do set Starship up and you're using the Starship ship via rules to determine the best way, and best way may mean different things to different companies. Um, so the ship via rules actually gives you the flexibility to define what best way means for you. Uh, but Starship will look at the, um, the actual freight charge, which would use the higher of the two weights, whether it be actual or dim weight. So that should be covered there. Okay, we had a plethora of questions come in. I hope I um, was able to answer everybody's question. Um, if we missed any, we'll take a look at those after the fact and make sure that everything everybody gets followed up on. And um, just give it a couple more minutes here and see if anybody else has any questions. But in the meantime, um, Mary, did you want to have any um, final words on post uh, office or yeah, other um, than, DSHA? Yeah, other than that, I would definitely encourage everyone to, to reach out to a, a small, you know, a shipping specialist solution uh, uh, rep at post office to kind of gauge what business they can shift over to save some money or to negotiate any agreements. Um, these resource links on this last, uh, on the last page of the PowerPoint, um, those are also valuable resources for you to take advantage of. And um, Mary, there are Indisha reps out there as well, correct? Right. So as I had mentioned, if for some reason you'd prefer to have a refer, uh, Indisha has over 50 sales reps. Quite a few of them, a good percentage, are out in the field, meaning that they're strategically located throughout the United States. So if you wanted to um, touch base with one of our sales reps, um, they could come out and visit your location as well and, um, you know, and help with trying to determine what packages best fit postal service to mitigate those shipping costs. They're available. You can call um, our 1-800 number at uh, Indisha and just press the sales line and you can get referred to one of our sales reps in your specific area. Good point. Great. Thanks, Mary. Yeah, I think that um, I find that there's sometimes, uh, many times, Indisha reps working directly with the post office rep. Um, to you know, help our customers find the best solution, um, you know, for their shipments. Um, and I guess the last point here, as uh, Jody did, uh, have a question from Jody regarding the presentation and um, the recording of this webinar. So yes, Jody, we plan on sending that out to everybody who registered. Um, we do appreciate everybody taking time out of their afternoon to take a look at the, the webinar with us, and we hope that you found it useful. Um, I really appreciate Mary taking time out of her afternoon to present this topic to our customers. I think it's great to be able to get somebody from the Indicia side uh, to present to kind of give you that other um, you know, aspect of the shipping and, and really look at the post office and how that can help you from um, you know, a freight perspective as far as um, with all those dim weight changes going on and giving you a low cost alternative for your shipments. So we really appreciate it. Um, Mary, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Uh, we'll just look forward to maybe doing future webinars. Um, we might have one coming up uh, maybe in quarter two to do a little bit more of a recap um, on in, delve in greater detail on cubic and CPP pricing. So. Um, yeah, definitely. Try to get organized in the near future. Yeah, that's a good point. And that CPP pricing, um, I think that will also be really helpful for um, you know our customers that are shipping smaller packages, 
and lighter weight packages. So we'll definitely be in contact with you guys on any uh, future webinars as it relates to that or even developments as it relates to that. So thanks a lot, everyone. We appreciate it. And hopefully we'll be talking to you all soon. Take care. OK. Thanks again. Thanks, Mary. Have a great day, everyone. OK. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.